and welcome to Movie Ruiners, a podcast about movies with brothers Nick and Reed Canada. Today we're joined by a special guest. He's the host of Tuesdays with Stories. He's also the host of We Might Be Drunk. His latest stand-up special, Out to Lunch, is up to 7.3 million views on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Kevin Hart. Hey, hey. I'm here. Thanks for having me. Comedy. I love Nashville. How was the show? Amazing show. We did uh, three last night, which will really run you ragged, but uh, we did one tonight, which felt like a breeze, so I could really stretch out and fuck around and uh, agree to the crowd podcast. was great. what's that <laughs> said agree to podcast <laughs> agree to podcast you have no idea where you're going that's one of the perks about being a man is like we're gonna send you a car i don't know where you're going i'll go you know i think a lady has to be like wait whoa i don't know where who are you are you gonna murder me women are always worried about getting murdered i'm kind of like eh, let's see what happens yeah i think we'll have a lot harder time getting a female on our podcast yeah <laughs> yeah good luck well, Mark, right off the bat, we got a gift for you. Oh, jeez. Uh, I know growing up in New Orleans, you spent a lot of time skateboarding. Wow. So you got you the soundtrack on oh, record. Oh, I love this game, and I used to play the soundtrack just yeah, for fun. It's uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Uh, Whoa. The first one. Who, who's your skater? Who's your guy? I mean, I was a fan of, uh, let's see, who was on this one? I was going to guess Bob Burnquist. <laughs> no, I was, a, I was an Andrew Reynolds guy. Oh, yeah. I like yeah. Jamie Thomas. Uh, and Chad Muska was a fun wigger. So yeah, this was this is awesome. Thanks. What a weird gift. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Usually don't think Tony Hawk. Let me get the record of this video game. But oh, I'll take it. it Thanks. Was, all the Tony Hawks have pretty good soundtrack. Pretty good music. What uh, what music were you listening to back then? Well, uh, I was a skateboard dweeb. Thank you, by yeah, the way. Yeah. So it was like a lot of ska and punk and uh, mm -hmm. like rancid shit I, like I that. I think I heard you say your first concert or one of your first was Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit, not proud of it. <laughs> but I watched that Woodstock '99 documentary recently. I know there were some bad takeaways from it, but I was like, one of my main takeaways was like, that was a pretty crazy show. Like, I, I wanted to see Limp Biscuit a little bit. <laughs> sure. I mean, at the time, that was like a hot ticket. It was like mm -hmm. Kid Rock, Limp Biscuit, Rage Against the Machine, Offspring. Yeah. I mean, Corn Sucks and like ICP and all that shit I never got into. But, uh, you know, Offspring's amazing. Green Day's great. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, that. We're, shit. we're all '90s. We're both '90s kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, are you Jim guys look young? Blossoms, like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like mm -hmm. better than Ezra. I can name so oh, many. Oh, like, love better than one Ezra. One hit. So the story I heard on Better Than Ezra. I don't know if this is not real or not. I just always heard it, loved it. Was that they were at a, like a open mic or something? A talent it, show. A school was talent, a talent show. show yeah, and yeah. this band performed before them that was terrible. And they're like, "What y'all's name?" And we're like. I don't know. And the band before them was Ezra. And they're like, we're better than Ezra. Whoa. <laughs> wow. That's the story. Is that like, have you heard that too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, going to start. I'm going to change my comedy name to better than Pauly Shore. <laughs> <laughs> That's fitting. <laughs> <laughs> he was here last week. So, all right. Uh-oh. Lay on. Oh, what are these gifts? I feel horrible. You don't have to get me shit. Uh, just give us your time. Ah, uh, yeah. come on. So, this what? gift, I this just is gave. Too much. I gave him a bottle of it, if, uh, Jack Daniels, but it's a barrel select. So when we actually interviewed Sam, you were, I believe, in Houston d testing out the Fat Cat Rice. Yes, yes. So you know more about the like picking out the barrels than I do. So wow. this this bottle was donated by Cabin Fever Beverages in Coleman. They're our buddies. They went and handpicked this bottle, and so I. But is that a pretty cool process? This is amazing. Yeah, uh, of course. It's super fun. I mean, we, we're clueless, me and Sam. So we went down to Houston, went to the distillery, tasted a bunch out of the barrel. It's a whole different game. And we picked the one we liked, and they're going to make it. But I got bad news. I can't bring us on a flight. Oh, we can. I can get it to you. All right. We, All uh, right. We, so I've already sent you a bottle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, the way it works, uh, you have to... Uh, Around Christmas time, you can say snow globes. I always say pickles or just any type of like. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and then also that's uh, Barney. Thanks. This is unbelievable. Yeah. We, oh, got, thanks. Uh, we got Sam Mo. Ah. And Sam was like, that's my favorite Simpsons character, which totally made sense to me. He looks just like Mo. And then Barney made sense to get for you. Y'all have the We Might Be Drunk pod and you're burping all the time. I'm a big burper. Huge and burper. I get a lot of, <laughs> I get a lot of gruff for the burping. People hate the burping. I say, you would think Rick and Morty would desensitize people to burping by now. They're like, it's not funny. Shut up. And I'm like, all right. Well, I just got a burp. I'm not trying to be hilarious. But I'm, yeah. I'm a big burper, too. Like, I just, I think, I don't know. 
<laughs> I relate to it. This is so sweet. Yeah, I mean, I you guys didn't have to do that. I feel bad. I, we went, we, it's like, so that, I think Cabin Fever put one of their little stickers in there for you. Yeah, what is Cabin Fever? It's just, uh, it's an uh, alcohol good, store in oh. Coleman that one of our buddies runs, and they, they yeah. donated the bottle. Hell yeah. They're good guys. Yeah. Oh, they donated it? Yeah. Damn, hey. thank you, Cabin Fever. Yeah, don't worry about it. Man, yeah, this if is anyone beautiful. deserves gifts, Mark, I think it's you. You've uh, gone on so many yeah. random podcasts where <laughs> well, <laughs> oh. you guys are the first people to to pay it back. That's <laughs> nice. I've never gotten a gift in my life. Well, we, we're noticing. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Jeez, and everybody told me to bail on this thing. <laughs> you another thing. Ah, Fusilli Jerry, come on! <laughs> yeah, what is this? My Make a Wish? Had to hit there. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought. Uh, did Seinfeld, you make this? No, I oh. didn't. I didn't. It looks like it. Yeah. Uh, but wow. That's Seinfeld, great. I know that was such a huge milestone for you getting to open for him. And huge. I mean, just knowing him, that's that's must be crazy. It's crazy. I have his phone number. I can give it out if you want. Has it? Uh, I'll ask you about that later. But has <laughs> has thank you. Has it changed like watching Seinfeld for you at all? Like, or are, when you're talking to him, are you ever like, oh, this is such a Seinfeld yeah, moment. Yeah, that's the hardest part is the fact that, like, I know the show so well, it's, like, burnt into my psyche. I've seen it 8,000 times. So, like, when I hang out with him, I want to go, what's the deal with, or yada, 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 or not there's anything wrong with that, or I'm the master of my domain, or whatever it is, but I have to hold myself back because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to hear that shit. I remember the first time I, I got the DVDs for all the Seinfeld sh- shows. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were talking about how they don't hang out. He was like, some uh, reporter was like, so do you and George and Elaine hang out? He's like, no, we go home after the show. And I was like, oh, I thought you guys were friends. Mm-hmm. I'm such an idiot. No, that made me s- kind of sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell do I know? You know, I went to see Seinfeld and when I was in college. It was like 2001 or 2000. Killed. It was amazing. It blew my mind. And somebody yelled out, where's Kramer? And he was like, well, he's not real. Mm-hmm. It's a character. And I remember being like, oh, yeah. I thought he was real, too. So I got a question for you. My dad saw Seinfeld at some point in time, and he was with my mom, but he t- told me he he said it was the, a filthy show. No. Was there a period of time where he was, like, I don't know, cursing more? He was just, like, shocked by how much he cursed. Really? I don't, I don't know if it was just a different time. or. If... I think he saw uh, Dennis Miller or something. <laughs> I think he got it mixed up. Well, he keeps telling me that. I'm like, no, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless he got heckled and he was like, get the fuck off stage or something, but... <laughs> No, that can't be. I think your dad's got dementia. <laughs> Possibly. Not, not yet, hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, well, on the same Seinfeld level, though, I know you auditioned for Curb. Mm. Did you meet Larry David? Have you talked to him? I met him once years ago at uh, Amy Schumer's wedding. Wow. But he, I'm such a fan. He's like my all-time hero, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to bother him. So it took everything I had not to go up and go, Mr. David, I love you. I'm your mm-hmm. biggest fan. You have a huge influence on me. And out of courtesy to him and respect to him, Schumer goes, hey, Mark, have you met Larry? And he was sitting at a table, and I was standing up over here. He was like where the fridge is. And I was like, no, no. And I go, hey, what's up, man? And he goes, hey, how you doing? And he goes, "She's a he's a comic. And he was like, oh, yeah, I can see that. And I was like, <laughs> thank you. And that was it. And I left it at that. Man. He actually ended up going home with a smoking hot actress. Well, I'll tell you later who it is. Okay. I'm excited nice. about that. He was just fresh off divorce. One of my buddies was in New Orleans one time, and he just told me this because he knew I loved Seinfeld, but he said he was just uh, gambling or sitting around a poker table and was talking to some old guy, made a comment, made him laugh, and when he walked away, someone was like, you know who you're talking to? That was Larry David. What? <laughs> and he was like, who's that? What? <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I was very mad and jealous. At a casino? Yeah, just at wow. a casino. So he's just wearing a hat and just kind wow. of doing his own thing. Yeah, they say he's the most normal guy. Like, he's a millionaire, he's famous, mm-hmm. he's a brilliant whatever. Hates himself, low self-esteem, you know, just regular dude. You know, he drove a cab in New York. Like, he was a nobody. Mm-hmm. And he, it, like, that's who he is. Like, the money never changed him. Yeah, I love that. The curb, that's one of my favorite ones with John McEnroe, where he borrows the, the cab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great one. He said he had a, a one of the ladies, he was like a limo driver for a while, and he was he had a blind lady. He had to pick her up every day, and he would never wash the car. And she was like, the car's clean, right? He's like, oh, yeah, it's clean, because she was blind. So he's like, what's the fuck the difference? Mm-hmm. That definitely sounds like a curb premise. It sounds like a premise. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Curb's about to come out. It's going to be exciting times. It's bittersweet because I'm not in it. <laughs>
But yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Sorry, man. I felt, no, it's fine. I felt, I, we aren't either. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a twist? You guys are like, well, we're actually. I, good. I hate to rub it in. It's all in the wound here. Yeah. So one of my favorite stories that it's I was a weird third party too. You did a podcast with a comedian from Birmingham at the time, and he's since moved to New York. Uh, his name was Gio Perez. Oh, I love <laughs> you, Gio. You did his show mm-hmm. He's a good recently. Egg. He had Dan Soder on, and yep. I saw he did it. So that was so cool. But Gio is classically a hard person to get our conversations with. For is instance, he? Oh, my gosh, man. So one time I was in his car, and he I... I think I called him Puerto Rican instead of Dominican. I did the same. He, the, yeah, he. Oh, he it was, was a long conversation about the differences yeah. between the culture. But he's also a long talker in general. Sure. So when y'all did, you did his like Instagram Live podcast. It was during the pandemic. It was yes. The pandemic. Yes. And all of a sudden, I see like Gio Perez is going live, and he goes live all the time. And I'm like, okay. And then it's like Mark Norman well, I, is I, live. I called Gio. Gio. I was like, dude, yeah. are you? Do you see this? Uh, I was like, wait, <laughs> what is happening? So I'm watching it. Well, so several times you're like, all right, man, like I kind of need to wrap this up. And he'd be like, well, one more thing, one more thing. More. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, I really got to take a shit. And you go and take a shit on oh, Instagram yeah. Live while you're doing really? it. Really? Oh, yeah, oh, you're wiping everything. Wow. So this inspired this idea because you, of all people, need one of these more than anybody. Uh oh. Ah. It's the Chappelle <laughs> Show. Wrap it up. Wrap box. it up. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wrap it up, B. Wow, you didn't make this, did you? So, I, I made that one. So Reed made uh, it. Click that button. That one doesn't work, but click the button on the side. Uh, on the inside? Right here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's y'all's uh, outro on uh, We Might Be Drunk. Yeah, a little I cheers. That'd be good. You can upload whatever song you want on Really? There. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I'll show you how to do it later. But How'd you, what are you, autistic? How'd a you little make bit, this? a little bit. That's I think incredible. that's why I like you so much, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Got to put this in the studio, and yeah, we yeah. might be drunk. So Uh-oh. you have the it's South Park quarter. It, it keeps going. You got to hit it again? If you don't okay. click it after a certain time, it plays a Japanese song. It Ooh, came from China. Ooh, okay. At least that, <laughs> that part did. da 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 so yeah, that was I thought, man. After that story, I was like, we need to get him wrapping up. Box. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could definitely use that. And when you're ready to leave tonight, just pull out the wrap it up box. I love it, man. You guys are good. You thought everything. This uh, is quite a bag of tricks you got here. Yeah, yeah. We, I know prop comics aren't very well thought of, but I hope this isn't too bad. Well, I gotta say, <laughs> Carrot Top gets a bad rap, but he's actually an amazing comic. Mm-hmm. He's like a punchline, but uh, he's a killer. He was in Birmingham, and the, f- the stardom burned down and burned his whole like trunk up. What? Uh, and he was supposed to go on Jay Leno the next night, and he's like, "I lost my act." Whoa! <laughs> like, I literally like don't have an act now. It caught Dang. on fire. Wow! Like, can you imagine? Like that's crazy. That's the, yeah. That's like such a like showing up naked to class or something. Right. Like waking up and you're like don't have your pants. You're just like this is that's wild and such that's, a terrible feeling but that's why i got into comedies because you don't need stuff yeah you know you just go up and uh be funny there you go barney yeah <laughs> so that sucks that he has to have a trunk of shit to lug around but he's good at he's good at what he does he gets a bad uh bad rep His, the plastic surgery has been pretty devastating yeah, that's a tough look. Yeah, because he just used to be this. I don't know. I, uh, I, I like was a huge carrot top fan. I watched like his like movie that came out, like Employee of the Board, Chairman of the Board, yeah, Chairman of the Board, which like, we all know because of Norm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sadly, Man. I'm sure carrot top loves that. He's like, oh, Norm died. Now I get a fucking reboot of my of him roasting me. I was even thinking of Norm when we were talking about better than Ezra. Yeah, and, he had the yeah. great joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember the joke? No, I, I'm forgetting the joke. <laughs> it, um. Do you know it, Mark? <laughs> uh, it's something like uh, it's uh, better than Ezra was at a was at a show, and they were they were. Uh, it's almost close to the talent show story you gave. It's in that vein, but it's, it's a really simple joke, and I'm blowing it. It's like they were uh, way more talented than the band before them, Ezra. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. Have, have you uh, listened to? Uh, Sorry. It's okay. I'm listening. It's okay. Thanks for not going directly into the mic. But I tried, but it won't it won't budge. Uh, but have you oh man, I think I might have that fart just took me lost my train of train. It's no of joke. Case of Dia. 
have, barbecue. I know you go by uh, on YouTube. You have a few other names. You have uh, you got Mark Dorman. Oh yeah, Park, Park Norman. Yeah. Have you thought of Nark Norman or Ooh. or Shart Fart Norman? <laughs> Ooh, that's good. That's good. I'm down. Like some people will come to me with ideas, like the Mark Dorman. I dressed up as a doorman and mm -hmm. went around New York, and they just came to me with that and bought the uniform, and so I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then there's uh, Park Norman, there's Skate Park Norman, there's Roof Norman, or Mark Roofman, whatever it was. <laughs> so if you got a decent idea, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. No, you've proven that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And maybe an even a not even good idea, I'll do it. So whatever you got, I'm in. I'm very uh, willing to try shit. That's why I'm here. Yeah, thanks for being on the podcast. Yeah, sure. <laughs> thanks for the gifts. Well, we got one last gift before we talk about Groundhog Day. Ooh, what but we is got this? you. This is a laser disc. Wow, are they? No, this not. Yeah, the yeah. Laser disc this big? Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it's a vinyl, right? No, it's no, a it's a laser disc. It's huh? where they used to play. It, it holds the movie on it. It is a laser disc. Oh, uh, whoa. I've never seen a laser. I, you I, always hear about them. I've never yeah. actually seen one. I knew you were like, uh, went to film school for a little bit. Or yeah. I thought you might uh, be able to pick it out, out, but you can just see some cool stuff. It has some cool facts on the back there. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. All right. Hang tight. Wow. Yeah, a lot of facts. Man, this feels like Christmas. All right. I'm not going to, this is a long, long facts yeah. here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is super cool. Groundhog Day, my one of my favorite Bill Murray movies. Very philo philosophical. It is. There was a lot of like religions that yeah. like, reached out to Harold Ramis, like really, afterwards. and he thought they were going to be like very like anti the movie, but we're like, hey, good job. Yeah, yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, Harold Ramis is a fucking beast. He doesn't get his due. He kind of wrote Caddyshack, Animal House. He's in Ghostbusters. He wrote this and directed it. Multiplicity. Ah, well, that's where he <laughs> fell off. But yeah, yeah. This is back when comedies were were good movies. Now comedies are kind of like, whoa, wacky. This is actually a good movie. Mm. Trading Places, good movie. Coming to America, good movie. Yeah, you're one of my favorite comedians. So when you chose to, this movie, this is one of my favorite movies, too. Oh. So I, was, I was very happy. It was just like, this is perfect. Great, uh, great. But, Mark, before we get started, we got one more gift for oh, you. Oh, I can't uh, take it. <laughs> <we> got, <laughs> wow. Uh, Groundhog Day on Laserdisc. This is not a Laserdisc. Wait, that's <laughs> a vinyl. That's a vinyl, right? That's not a Laserdisc. <laughs> it oh, is it a Laserdisc. Laser <laughs> wow. I've never right. seen one in real life. Yeah, Holy right. shit. I've always heard about it. All right, yeah. Oh, what, you got fun facts on here? <laughs> this is back when comedy you know, movies were good. You know, all the religions reached oh, out really? to Oh, really? I mean, Harold Ramis mm -hmm. is a beast. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get his due. Yeah, we, we can get into the movie now. I just, I, we had to do the, great the Groundhog gag. <laughs> I like it. That was, yeah, that was like, uh, was Talking about props. I've been dreading it for like four days. Like, uh, like, should I do it? I don't know. <laughs> we were talking about like reaching out to you and talking to you and like, and, Feel free to funny. use that wrap it up box whenever you need to get I'm out I'm going to use this when I got to remember to wear a condom. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry. you were talking about like Texan Seinfeld and that like that whole, oh, like he hasn't responded. Like, yeah. It's a similar feeling. Like when you're like, we were trying to book comics, you're like, oh God, they haven't responded. You don't want to get on there. Like you're just like, Ugh. yeah, comics are tough because A, we're lazy and B, we're forgetful. So you're like, you want to do my pod? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll do it. But then I'm never thinking I'm, that's it. Mm -hmm. So then I need you to hit me up again to go, it's here at this time, and then I'll be there. But if you never hit me up again, I would just forget about it. Oh, yeah. But then you don't want to be annoying. So it's this weird it's little, tough, you little give and take. He's like, who are these guys that keep sliding into my DMs? Right, right. <laughs> well, Mark, but you did a good job. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. What, uh, I know you touched on Groundhog Day for a little bit, but like, when's the first time you saw that movie? Did you, <laughs> did you love it like instantly? I did. What is it like? Ninety two or something like that. Ninety two, ninety three, ninety three. Ninety three. Okay, yeah. So I was ten when that came out. But I loved Bill Murray. I loved Caddyshack. I loved mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. Stripes. Oh, stripes. I loved uh, Meatballs. All that shit. I loved SNL with Bill Murray. Uh, so this came out and I was all in. And uh, I had it on VHS and just rewatched it over and over. And it came on TV a lot back in the day. So that was back when you had mm -hmm. cable. So uh, there was no streaming, so you just watched what was on. It was like a TBS movie. Yeah. Always on. Always. There was, TBS had a couple that just played. It was like Breakfast Club, 
uh, Groundhog Day, Shawshank, yep. um, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, yeah, Goodfellas was on a lot. So you just saw movies over and over, and you could not watch them. You're like, well, they're on, you know. And uh, I've seen this movie 900 times. Yeah, and it just gets better, really. And my my dad liked it. My dad hated everything. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that I liked it and he liked it was a big deal. A huge reason why I like Seinfeld is because when I was growing up, same thing, my dad showed me Groundhog Day. I was like, this is one of my favorite movies. I was like, oh, I, I love this, too. But Seinfeld, if I wa- if he came in after work and I was watching cartoons or something, he'd just like shake his head at same, me. Same, But if I was watching Seinfeld, he'd be like, oh, which one's this? Oh. <laughs> and just yes. like sit there and watch it for a second. So I'd look cool. And like even, right. I might have been watching cartoons a minute before, but then I'd just get stuck watching Seinfeld. Yes, yes. My dad was the same way. If it was animated, he was like, ugh, grow up. You're a retarded <laughs> kid. And, and then the if cartoons, I was watching... Cartoons, you're nine. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is with with friends would be on and my dad would go like he would make a joke and he would say the punchline before mm. they would say it and he's like this is so predictable this is shitty writing and i was like man my dad how does he know and he's like i've been watching <laughs> sitcoms for 40 years and this is just the same bullshit and then we'd watch seinfeld he's like this is different this is new this is original so anything that sh- was shitty comedy he would trash and so if my dad liked it i was like all right this is good and he liked this I was just imagining your dad guessing that punchline, like the Jeopardy scene in uh, Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is just such a weird, cool, cool premise for a comedy, and it's kind of fantasy, but still comedy, but it works. Yeah, And I, then Bill Murray can carry a movie. I know you uh, have said you're not a fan of sci-fi, and I feel like this is about as sci-fi as you'll get. This is about as bad <laughs> as I'll go, yeah, yeah. This, like, Liar, Liar, I used to love that movie, mm-hmm. and which is the premise is so flimsy. <laughs> the kid's like, I want my dad to not be able to lie, and he blows out the candles, and that's it. That just works. Mm-hmm. So we just have to believe this premise, but you go with it, it's fun. When we were at the beach, I got to tell him the story. Yeah, that's fine. So, <laughs> Reed was very young. Uh, we were, I mean, you were maybe six, yeah. seven. I was born 91. He was born 86. Uh, oh, wow. So okay. So, yeah, I mean, five, five six So, years. I was always watching movies I shouldn't watch when I was yeah. like five, I six, couldn't seven. watch The Simpsons. My mom, like, wouldn't let what? me watch any. Oh, I'm, like, the firstborn super, like... Oh, you can't yeah. watch it. Call. I had, had to leave a spend the night party in third grade because they were watching Jurassic Park, and they uh, thought about, like, I was just that kid. Yeah, yeah. So Reed gets to watch Liar Liar. We're down at the beach. I like really wanted to watch it. We watch it. Well, so then like the next day we go to this restaurant, and Reed goes to the bathroom and gets back. He comes back and his hair is all disheveled. And he's just like <laughs> clearly been in a fight, and we're like, "Who did this?" He's like, "I just got beat up in the bathroom." And runs us through the whole game. It was like, I don't know. He had dark hair. He had dark eyes. Uh, like, we're like, talk, my mom gangly. talks to the manager <laughs> yeah. of the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> like, complains. Like, I'm sure they comp stuff. Like, wow. And then, like, on the way home, my mom's like, Reed, did you beat yourself up in the bathroom because of that movie we watched? I knew it was Damn. funny. I just didn't understand why. <laughs> yeah. Who did this do? <laughs> kind of six foot, big teeth, kind of gangly. Yeah. Wow. That's a lead. Did you, you didn't need the radiator, did you? Uh, no, there was no. He does that in the movie, and I was like, oh, that's brutal. <laughs> you don't even see that injury. I know, I know. I'm kicking my ass. <laughs> yeah. What's great is I did that for no reason. There was no yeah, benefit. There was, <laughs> there was nothing. I didn't. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. we didn't even tell me how to pick up the check. It was just a wild so. card. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, I found like a sling somewhere for your arm, you know, when you break your arm. And I found it somewhere, like a summer camp, and I just put it on. I was mm-hmm. like, ah, I broke my arm. My mom's like, oh, my God. And I just made the whole thing up. <laughs> it was fun. You got to rise out of them. They, they pretended to care, you know. You got to hug. Harmless little pranks. Mm-hmm. So, Mark, I feel like you're a big people people pleaser sure which is part of like why you're here in general sure but with that like i feel like you're kind and nice and is there a part of you that really liked this movie because bill murray like gets to be so mean and rude Um, with no consequences like i was sitting there like thinking interesting there might have been a little part of you that isn't that way that would like to explore that when he was a cunt in the beginning yeah yeah i did like that (laughs) i do like that and i uh i like that he got a second chance and he could figure it out but no, I totally relate to that guy who's like just cranky and cunty and mean, and he's got the niceness in him. We don't have to go through the whole movie, but yeah, it's it's fun when he's in the beginning part because he's like a kind of a newscaster mm-hmm. douchebag guy, and you know Ned Ryerson, he's like, get out of here, you suck, you know. But I guess I like that he turns around and becomes nice. 
so follow it because you said Ned Ryerson. Who's your? Do you have a Ned Ryerson in your life that if you ran into right now, you'd be like, oh. Oh, I got a million Neds. I got a million Neds. Too many Neds because New York has a zillion people in it. It's got a million comics and guys you used to work with. They're weighted tables with. So when you bump into them, they're like, hey, how's the career? What's going on? What are we doing? You want to get a drink? Da, da, da. And you're like, oh, how do I get out of this? But uh, yeah. <laughs> you should just do what Bill Murray does and hug him and ask him if he can cancel the rest of his day. <laughs> that, yeah. that was improv. Yeah, yeah. I read Was that. it? He, yeah. It was just supposed to be give him a hug and say you miss him. And they said that like Andy McDowell too was always, she's always like genuinely laughing throughout the movie because Bill just kept everyone on their toes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Actors are supposed to kind of be able to know what's going to happen. Yeah. And Bill just always improvs. Wow. Did you know too, the film, the movie was shot in like reverse order? No. Because uh, Ramus knew that Bill Murray over time gets like disillusioned with shooting and gets grumpier over time. Oh, so he shot the happy scenes first. Brilliant. Yeah, it kind of it's kind of sad though at the same time. A little bit, <laughs> but the cool thing is Ramus knew and and mm -hmm. used that. Exactly. That's incredible. Well, the first part of the movie when they're like when he's the weatherman like in yeah. studio, they shot that like months after the film was in Whoa. the can because the storyline didn't make sense because it kind of opened up with him already in Puxatani. Uh -huh. He was like already in Groundhog Day. Yeah. And yeah, the original script. That's what the original script called for. It. So mm -hmm. Ramus was like, all right, I think you need to know the character and see him getting here. Yes. And not just waking up there. For sure. Which yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. Like we yeah. watched uh, during the pandemic mm -hmm. and we reviewed Palm Springs. Oh, good movie. It, mm -hmm. it was really fun. It was similar to this very similar but he you know you wake up and he's already in it right it's kind of it, more uh to the original premise it, yes spring was i would agree mm -hmm. but reed we were doing that podcast and reed kept throwing it back to groundhog day because he loves groundhog day so much so it was like all right let's let's keep talking about palm springs like, well bill murray would have done it like yeah so yeah the, when you did pick uh groundhog day i was pumped for reed because i was like man you're one of his <laughs> favorite comics it's his favorite movie like this is just the perfect storm. All right, great, yeah, and great fact. Keep them coming if you know more. Cause yeah, I, I got a few, a few please, a few humdingers. The, uh, the kid that fell out of the uh, tree, yeah, ended up growing up to become a newscaster. Hey, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> I thought it was fun too that uh, Bill Murray goes from being a weatherman that can't predict the weather or can't predict it accurately to being able to predict everything. Oh, yeah, good call. Uh, good observation. And, and also, Bruce Almighty. Isn't that weird? There's other, like, newscasters with, like, I don't know, godlike mm. powers. I don't know. I just kind of thought something else. I, Interesting. I don't know. No, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird coincidence. I don't really have words to connect it all, but... By the way, how great is Stephen Toblowski, Ned Ryerson? That guy oh. kills it. Mm -hmm. Bing! He's... He's so good. Chris Elliott's so Chris good. Chris Elliott's great. I forget every time. Like I, I forget he's in this movie every time. And then I see him. I'm like, oh, yeah, Chris yeah. Elliott's in this. Wait, who's Chris Elliott? He's the, he's the like, camera guy. The camera guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's in, like, he's had one of those careers where you're just, it's like the most unassuming long career where you're just like, oh, yeah, he's in this. Yeah, he's in that. yeah. Like, he was in Schitt's Creek that was just right. won so many awards. Right. Like, I mean, I think something about Mary. Yes, yeah, he's in something he's about great Mary. In that. Like he, Woogie, Woogie, like, he's great in that. Like there's just you, you ever had a white head on your eyeball? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. He's a he's a killer. He was uh he was on Letterman back in the day. I, yeah, I forgot he's on SNL. Yeah, yeah. And then his daughter ended up doing SNL, mm -hmm. and she was like on How I Met Your Mother for a while. Oh, like, yeah, kind of like I just I don't know. You see that a lot where you're like, I didn't even know this guy like did all these things, let alone like has a daughter that's doing all this yeah things. yeah he's got a great presence like he's just he does goofy. he's just goofy just standing there being in the shot i yeah. know and he's subtle in a funny way bill murray's also subtle but so good mm -hmm. he you can't put your finger on why he's good but he's great norm mcdonald kind of had that you're like this guy's just great but i can't figure out why bill murray's great he almost he's almost like winking at the camera like we're all in on this me being a a funny guy. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but he's got something. Well, I feel like Groundhog Day, too, especially feels the most true to Bill. Yes. And just like his character. Even like the pranks he's doing, it feels like what he does in real life a little bit. You know, right, just, right. Just like some of the odd behavior. Yeah, you uh, can kind of just tell he doesn't give a fuck. And <laughs> it, it, it comes through somehow. I don't know. It's amazing. 
Did uh, I was curious? Did you attempt to learn piano because of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, during, during that's the a pandemic. great question. That it is what I think of when I think of a cool guy playing the piano at a party. Mm -hmm. Like he just gets on the piano at the end with the sunglasses, and I'm like, I want to be that guy. Oh yeah. And so that yeah, that that did factor in when I bought the piano. Wow, man, you just tapped into my fucking lizard brain. <laughs> Till we die.